Hello, I'm Black Bright and broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. And if you've already subscribed, thank you for subscribing and thank you for your comments. Um, I wanted to do this video before I left while the passion was still in me. Um, I'm going to pop out in a minute, but um, it's about the knife crime um, campaign on chicken boxes. Now, it's caused quite a fora. Um, I'm not quite sure um, whether the fora is justified or whether people are focusing on the wrong thing. But yes, um, what, the, what some people are saying is that it's racist it's, or it's borderline racism to associate knife crime with chicken boxes. And um, for my part, I would like to say that you know, if you want to reduce knife crime, you would have to put it on a cross section of food items. So, you know, not only fried chicken, I'm not quite sure why Kentucky isn't included in that, because I would think a lot of people go to Kentucky, but it's not Kentucky. It's Dixie Peach, it's Cottage Chicken. And another one called Morley's, which I've never heard of. I don't know if it's cheap chicken. I don't know what kind of chicken it is. But Kentucky Fried Chicken, which to me is the most popular, is not included in the campaign. So why not? If you want to, um, if you want to influence, positively influence a wide range of people, young people in particular, why don't you put it on some on chicken boxes, some on pizza boxes, some on Subway, um, on their, okay, they don't have boxes, but, you know, you could put it in their windows, Nando's, Nando's is so popular. So why not, and they also sell chicken. So I think the fact that it's fried chicken, somebody said, why not do knife-free watermelon? <laughs> I had to laugh. I mean, I know it's not funny, but, you know, it's how it's put out there. And it's probably unconscious bias. I have no idea. It could probably, um, it's definitely stereotyping. So it's associating, not only associating black people with knife crime, but it's associating black people with fried chicken. And I think that is why it's causing a problem or a concern. Um, they've also got uh, in the boxes, I think they've made 321,000 boxes. And on these boxes, it's got um, knife free for everyone. And then it's got like some kind of motivational method message inside um, about, you know, from kids who have turned their lives around and have turned to boxing, have turned to music, who have turned to different kinds of sports and that kind of stuff. And some who have turned to education. So, um, but I was thinking about the smoking boxes. They've got no, you know, smoking kills on cigarette boxes. Does that, influ does that influence people from not smoking? No, it doesn't. People smoke more than ever. They've reduced um, the boxes. They made them larger, thinking the financial um, aspect of it will make people think again and stop buying cigarettes, but it doesn't. So having words on a chicken box, it's not necessarily going to impact those people they want it to impact. And when you think about stop, um, not, um, stop and search, if it's intelligence led, then then it's fine, but it's not intelligence led half the time. It's through racial profiling. And that is why you know, the success rate is so low. So, um, yeah, what can I say? I just wanted to make it quick, but I just wrote down the three points. Um, knife freak slogans on takeaway chicken boxes. A story in this box meant is hope to blah, blah, blah. It's meant to help recovery and give hope. Suggests that chicken is the choice of food for those carrying knives, which is working class and it's quite classist. Yeah, when you think about chicken also, it's more classist for me than anything else. And yes, um, when you think about fried chicken, I, I think not so much. I don't know if it's so much in England that chicken is associated to black people. I know maybe more in America, but 
I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of people eat chicken. It's cheap, it's cheerful, it tastes good. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's going to influence who it's meant to influence. Um, and yeah, anti smoking slow, I just said that. Um, I think I've covered most of this actually. What was interesting though, I was trying to find statistics on white people who get stabbed. Could I find it? No matter how I worded it, I could not find it. But guess how I found, how I had to make the deduction. Um, I found one link, well, one link I was reading. I don't even know what the paper was, but I did copy and paste it. So I should have it in the description. But it said that 25% of knife related um, homicides is black which by deduction means 75% are non-black. So that's how I got those figures. But when you, the way it's portrayed in the media is that it's predominantly black. And I saw this um, research document called The Colour of Crime. I was horrified. I was absolutely horrified. It's totally biased. And because I, I haven't, well, I just noticed it today and I was just going through it today and I haven't got um, the wherewithal or the resources to research all that information. I just know that, you know, when you do, it's taken out of context. That's all I can say. But it's called The Colour of Crime. If any of you haven't looked at it, um, have a look at it and tell me what you think about it. Um, but, yeah, I was listening to another guy who was talking about... Um, the effect of knife crime and he'd obviously read the color of crime because he was quoting statistics and you know those kind of in that kind of information in the wrong hands is going to create the wrong impression that's my worry um okay so let me see yeah america is quite open to their statistics when when I was looking for the amount of knife crime to do with whites, America, white on white crime is 83%. So they were quite open about it. Um, I'm not quite sure why England is so, everything you need to get in England, every kind of information to show transparency in the UK, you have to do it through the Freedom of Information Act. Shouldn't have to do that. Why can't they be more open and more transparent with the information? It's so annoying and time consuming. And that's probably why. Um, but thank God we have people who do um, apply for, for freedom of information and do share the information and hopefully, you know, we get a hold of it that way. So little people like me, who don't have resources, I don't have to spend days and hours looking for um, that kind of information. Um, yeah, let me just see. Knife-related homicides went from 272 in 2007 to 186 in 2015 and 86 so far in 2019. So it's kind of, it's kind of, reduced but it just seems a lot because every it's like almost every day we're hearing you know one here one there and it's just it just seems a lot all the time and it's awful so by repeating it even though it's one here and one there and you know maybe two or three a week it still kind of conjures up in your mind when it's on the me in the media that it's happening all the time and like it is like they say an epidemic but i don't know why in 2007 there were, it it was 272 that is a hell of a lot i don't know what happened in 2007 anyway um and one in I think it's one in five victims were, were men aged 18 to 24. 25% were black and the highest proportion since 1997. And like I said, if 25% were black, it means 75% are non-black, which could be white, could be Asian, could be Oriental. Um, 43,000 knife offences across the UK in 12 months. The irony of it, though, is that 
most violent attacks involve no no weapons. It's where people um, push somebody or make, push somebody down the stairs or strangle them or, you know, that kind of stuff. Domestic abuse. Um, so for people, I don't think there's any point rising to the bait and saying, concentrating on the chicken boxes and saying it's racist. I mean, a lot of time it's unconscious bias. I mean, I think they kind of, when they're thinking about that, they're thinking, oh yeah, a lot of black kids eat chicken. From that perspective, yeah, they've made that relationship. But I think it's a waste of energy to focus on that aspect. And we need to be thinking about the true cause of knife crime. And I think if if they're eating chicken and they have to go home to, a, to domestic violence or being excluded from school and not having enough to do and feeling victimized or bullied, eating chicken or looking at a chicken box is not going to help them. It's not going to help them survive. And a lot of those kids, they carry knives to survive. So, you know, you can't equate the two because chicken, they eat chicken when they're bloody hungry or if they've got a few quid to go and buy some chicken. If they are, if chicken is their food of choice. But it doesn't mean that they're going to read the contents of that box. They may, if they see a little black face in there, they may, they may not. Some of them might not even be literate enough to read. Who knows? We don't know um, the circumstances of the individual. But all I'm saying is that, you know, it's not, it, it, I don't know if it's going to help, the, if it's going to reach its target audience. That's all I'm saying. Because, like we all know, everybody eats chicken. And the guy who's going to stab someone, it might make him think twice if he looks on the chicken box and says, you know, um, a knife free. But there again, if somebody's killed his brother or somebody's killed his aunt or there's some kind of gang feud going on or somebody, you know, or they feel vulnerable or they feel um, angry or isolated or hurt. You know, that that what's on that chicken box is not going to make a difference. And remember, a lot of these um, knife crimes are fueled by drugs so they're not even in a rational state of mind if they're high or if their if their um, mind is warped because remember when you take drugs it, it makes you paranoid and it dulls your senses and it makes you think things that are not really happening and so it also makes you more angry so you know you've got all of those things in the equation so if somebody's taken drugs, whatever sort of drugs they've taken, and they go and eat chicken. But I, I think they're more likely to go and do the um, the deed and eat chicken afterwards than eat chicken first and then go and do the deed. I don't know how they think. But I would think if it's on their mind to do that kind of thing, they're not going to stop off at a chicken shop. But hopefully, if they are not at that place, and then they end up in that chicken shop and they're in the right frame of mind and they read something. It may motivate some. It may change some. It may change one. And like somebody said, if it changed the mind of one, it's done its job. But, you know, we really need to get to the root. Forty five million pounds was cut from youth services. Kids have got nowhere to go. They've got nothing to do. They get tired of playing games and on their phones and all these, and even then when they play games, that's all about, usually about killing. So what is there to insensitize them? You know, we do have some parents who, you know, guide their children and they're so good with their children. And yet you have others that just can't be bothered or they're tired or they're working long hours. The children feel neglected. And then you have, you know, they have problems at school or they're excluded and all of those other stuff. And it just compounds the situation so um i really don't know i don't know what the answer is you know i want knife crime to stop because it's such an easy crime to commit you can go in the kitchen and get a bloody knife it's such an easy crime to commit and, you know, I don't know how anybody can stab anyone, but it's it's not good. 
But anyway, um, I needed to do that before I um, commit, <laughs> attended to my other commitments. And that's all for now. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.